thought I'd make a quick video on how to download your program um, that you've made in MPLAB X onto some kind of microchip chip. I'm using here a PIC 16F84A. I'm using the ICD3. And unlike most of you out there, I'm sure I'm using a Mac, not a PC. I think it's all about the same. Um, so let's figure this out. Uh, I thought for a while that there was some kind of like magic way to hook everything up in some kind of order, but now I'm kind of over that. Um, so everything is unhooked right now. This thing is not even plugged in. No, no lights are on. So I'm just going to plug it into my USB port. And that's what it starts with. The status light blinking red. And the next thing I'm going to do, your, your, your unit came with this little guy, right? Your little um, test uh, interface. So we're going to plug that in. And just, uh, I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit here. This is eventually what we're going to get to. This is um, how you plug uh, in the circuit board and the chip um, so that you can program your chip. I know that looks like a lot, and it kind of is. Um, I'll just briefly describe what's in here. Um, obviously, we have power, we have ground, we have... A, a resistor going to pin 4 which is the master clear um, this stuff is all just uh, you know I made sort of a, my own RJ11 cable here they are into their um, correct pins I have my oscillator in here this is a 4 megahertz oscillator with the, with the I've already soldered ahead of time the um, the two like 15 picofarad uh, capacitors on there you want to do that, especially with higher speed um, uh, 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 oscillators, uh, crystals. Um, it's just that's just such a fast speed that if they're just loose in um, a, like a, a breadboard, yeah, it can cause problems. So solder everything in. Get um, the pins as or the you know whatever connections you have as close to the pins as possible. All this, by the way, is in the um, microchip. Uh, user's guide. I know the most of these units do not come with this. Don't freak out. Just go and find it on uh, Microchip's website or just search for it on Google, to be honest with you. And, uh, and you know, honestly, read it. Um, there's a lot of information in here. On page 19 is the schematic on how to hook this thing up, everything I just described. So if you're like, whoa, 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 slow down, it's all right in here. Um, the one thing that, you know, if you're used to, you know, the way that like EEPROMs were programmed, you're probably looking at this and going, whoa, what's going on? Um, you know, this, uh, the thing that really threw me was that I assumed that the computer would power this chip while it was, you know, being programmed. Not so. It can do that, but it is not recommended. If you really look through the fine print on, on your user's guide, you will see that they do not recommend that you do that. So I, you can see this is hooked up to power. This is goes up to my uh, power unit up here. I'm going to supply this thing with 5 volts worth of power. And it's going to be on when the programming occurs. Um, so that's just a little different from the way things used to be. Um, so let's get back to what we're doing here. We're going to, um, this is obviously the, the, the test unit. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead now on my Mac and I'm going to launch the IDE. Um, I do feel that having the USB plugged in first before you launch the thing is just good practice. I can't tell you that for sure, but... Uh, so this is what, you know, this is what you end up with, the start page. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And let's just run the debugger test program here. Let's see what happens here on the status lights, if anything. This should, uh, okay, it's asking me which one to, to do. I'm going to do this one. It's the only one there is. And this should go green. There, it went green. Okay. Now the funny thing is... <laughs> So it went green, and what 
output do I have here? Oh, it says, could not connect to the selected hardware tool. Please make sure the tool is not being used by another project in MPLAB X. And it's in red, you know? And so that seems like, whoa, I've done something wrong. No, you've done something right. That is actually what you want to see. Um, and, and, and really the thing we're looking for here is that light to be green, the status light to be green. Okay, so that being done, now we can unplug this test board and we can plug in the thing that we want to um, program. Um, I find that this RJ11 thing is kind of a weak link. You want to really make sure that it's seated down in there. And at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the power on. So there we go. 4.9 volts. That's really close to 5, but it says 4.9 no current, that's a good sign. And so let's go ahead and open up a project here. Open project. I'm gonna pick this one right here. Open. Boom, it's gonna go ahead and open. Um, I've already, you know, built this, you know, a million times, but I'm just gonna build it again. Your build should say that it is complete. That is a good sign. And then we're just gonna click this button right up in here. Uh, I'll just, before I do that, I will just go and we'll just look at this configuration window real quick. Come on, where is it? Um, you know, I, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I find that building an absolute mode is important. Um, Usually I have this uh, case sensitivity thing unchecked. That's also important because I tend to not really care what I, if I use capitals or not. Um, obviously you want to make sure that you are, um, you know, using your ICD3 and not your simulator. That's pretty obvious. So let's go okay there. So let's just download this thing. Boom, we're gonna hit download. Connecting to programmer. Oh, of course. <laughs> the second I make a video, it fails. All right, I'm going to try it again. I don't know what the problem was there. It's been, it just worked. Uh, I don't know what the problem is now. We have power. I'm going to replug that in. Let's try it one more time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I told you that was a weak link, right? Programming, programming, slash verify complete. When you get that programming slash verify complete, you have downloaded your software into the chip and it is ready to go. So there it is. And now we can turn the power off, pull the chip out, put it in wherever it needs to go and we're good to go. So. I hope uh, that was helpful. Um, if you have any other uh, questions that I might be able to answer, please leave them in the comments thing and I'll see if I can get to them. All right. Thanks. Bye.